Hey guys, Mark here again. Cool little drone. Top Vision uh, X39-1 or something like that. Anyways, video today. I'm going to try to cover everything you need to know about the Hudson H501S and SS um, from beginning to flights to problem. Uh, might be a long video. I'm going to try to do this as quick as possible from, on, you know, going, getting out of the box to flying the damn thing. So stay tuned, guys. All right. So, guys, when you get your H501S or SS, you unbox it. You got the drone. You got the four propeller. If you're going to shoot videos or pictures, you need to get a high-quality micro SD card. You know, they come in different packs, all different kinds. But for this drone, you only need, you know, class 10, about 85 megabits per second, and you'll be good. After you get a micro SD card, it probably comes with an adapter like this. Or, you can get yourself for like 15 bucks, a multi-card reader. You put the micro SD card in the back. And then this plugs into any USB 2.0 or 3.0 port. So you can watch your videos on there. And you need to format this, any card, before you put it in the drone. You need to format it to FAT32 or File Allocation Table 32. Once you do that, you can put it in the drone on the belly. Right there. There's only one way to put it in. There's a tiny little picture on the bottom right there. It pretty much goes in like upside down and boom. Then you're ready to shoot videos and pictures. On the controller, you're not going to have these antennas unless you do the antenna mods. This micro SD card slot is useless. It is there for absolutely no reason. It doesn't do anything. So don't think about recording video off of your transmitter because this does not work. You can plug in a external monitor, but it has to be a three, like a three that has one, two, three separations in it. If you get one like a stereo headphones, you know, like something like that, it's going to have four little separations and that's not going to work this is actually white and red for audio but it still will work for video it's an rca plug that goes to banana jack you plug it in the bottom of the two the bottom and now you can output your video not you're not going to get your telemetry information like your gps coordinates or your battery voltage it will only show you your video, your FPV, nothing else. Only the controller will show you your telemetry information. So, number one, get a good micro SD card. Number two, format it to FAT32. Number three, obviously you're going to want to go out and fly. So, got to put the props on. B props are the left front and the right rear. They tighten clockwise. The A props, which would be the left rear and right front, counterclockwise. So we'll just spin them. They are self tightening propellers. However, however, I really recommend you either hold, take the propeller wrench, hold the motor in the cowl, upper cowl, or with your finger and just give them a quick snug. With your fingers they don't have you know don't do it super tight because they're plastic threads and you can strip them just do it you know just give them a snug because i've seen them fly off of self-tightening propellers they can come off mid-air and your drone's done okay propellers are on so now i heard that the newer h501 ss's don't need compass calibrations for every flight well, if you're going to do a compass calibration, or you need to do one, okay. it's just flash up sense, say blah, blah. Now I need to plug in the drone battery. Make sure there's no kind of magnetic material, top wrench, even the controller. 
watches, cell phones, car keys, even change in your pocket would be 10 to 15 feet away from this drone when you do a compass calibration. So if you can see my pitch and roll on the screen here, they are both at zero right up here. That's because I'm on a level pool table. You need to have those near zero. The little H is your heading. If those, if that actually goes to zero, that is true magnetic north. That's why you cannot have magnetic material near the quad during a compass calibration. It will give it a, a false sense of north. It will pick up the magnetism and it will throw it off. So this is how you do a proper compass calibration. What you want to do is get all the metal away. I'm just doing this right now. Pick it up exactly from where it's self-initiated and just slowly turn it with your hands. You do not want to swing it around at arm's length. I don't care how slow you go. Now they're flashing green. Point the nose down and go clockwise both directions. Don't do one clockwise and the other one counterclockwise. You'll get all sorts of GPS blinder. Now the lights are flashing so she's ready to fly. Now you can arm the propellers by either moving the sticks out and down or out and in. And this is how you access your menu. Hold down the left stick and hold the right one in. Alright, we are in menu. We got 5.8 frequency which you can change. And I have mine set at 5755 megahertz. You should be between 5745 and 5760 megahertz, even with the aftermarket antennas, the stock antennas as well. So let's exit out of there. I mean, when I got this drone, it was set at 5785 megahertz. That's too high. That's running into a lot of Wi-Fi issues. So then you can go to fly when no GPS. I highly recommend that you leave that on no unless you're a very experienced pilot and you're going to be flying in manual mode. Leave that on no. So don't go to yes, go to exit. We can show, you can see your versions. Uh, you know, the receiver version on the controller is 4.2.24. The LCD version, you don't have to worry about much. That's just your screen on your controller is 1.3.4. And then down in the red, it says 501SS, 2.1.29, and 1.1.38. And with these firmware versions, I've gotten that drone to like 50 meters I can't even remember on one flight battery and it returned home so that was pretty incredible just using a 14 dBi panel antenna and a 3 dBi dipole okay so that's how you access your menu and then you can get out of it um, just press exit go down navigate with the right see how I'm going up and down just press exit okay so that's how you get into your menu and just as a reminder, let me go back into the menu quick. You see where this says set sensitivity? Look at what it comes default set at. Expert mode. 100% for elevator, aileron, and rudder, which is basically pitch, roll, and yaw. So if you go down, normal mode. 60, 60, and 60% 60 for elevator, aileron, and rudder, which is your roll, pitch, and yaw. Well, actually, it's your throttle, your roll, and your yaw, but whatever. You know, if you're starting out, switch it to normal mode because this thing is kind of beasty and, and it, it comes default set in expert mode. All the gains, you know, for the control sticks are at a hundred percent. So when you go forward, that thing is really ripping forward. And then when you come to a stop, the quad wants to bob up and then your camera's all over the place. So that's up to you what you want to do with that. I'm trying to show you the screen here. 
Anyways, we can get out of that. Exit. And then go all the way down to the bottom to exit your menu. So that's the menu. And before you take off, make sure you wait for at least six satellites on the on the controller and the quad and the controller is always going to fluctuate you're gonna see that number move around but never take off unless you have at least six I would recommend personally recommend until you get as many as you can it's not killing your battery see that I'm at eight volts and this thing's been on for about five minutes just wait for satellites do your compass calibrations or whatever you need to do and wait for as many satellites as you can before you arm the props and when you arm the props they're just going to, going to spin it's not going to take off until you give it throttle which is the upper left stick and I recommend also that you give it full throttle up until it's airborne it will fly up let it sit there for a minute and really get its bearings you know it needs to it's only got 11 satellites it doesn't have any type of optical flow sensor or ultrasonic sensor mapping the ground so if you want to eliminate gps wander where the quad's kind of going like this not knowing where it's at let it sit for a minute after you take off so that's all the way from taking out of the box, getting a micro SD card, formatting the micro SD card to FAT32, putting it in the drone, arming the propellers, waiting for satellites, and taking off. Alright, if you need to do a controller calibration, you need to hold both sticks to the upper left and turn the controller on at the same time. See what that says? Calibrate stick, trying to get it so you can see it. Calibrate stick, mode two, move sticks up, down, left, right, then long press any trim button to finish the calibration. So what I do, and this is kind of important because there's locators inside this transmitter that are, you know, telling you what to, telling the drone what to do. So I go up all the way to the corners all the way around do two complete circles at the exact same time calibration save now if you watch the reticles they should move in accordance with your sticks see the screen see how they're moving right here in the corners so if I press up it should go all the way up just the red right left up down right left and then they should both move in correlation if you're going that way same thing with this one if you did it properly the reticles on the screen will move in correlation with the way you are pointing your control sticks your joysticks whatever you want to call them so that is how you do a controller calibration Hold both sticks to the upper left, turn the controller on at the same time, up, down, left, right, or do two complete circles both ways, and it will record that. You hold any trim button, and it will save it. Now on to IMU calibrations. Okay, IMU calibrations. One of the most important and overlooked things with drones. After any crash, after any flip, you accidentally rolled it over, it can throw the IMUs or inertial measurement units off. So to do an IMU calibration, what you need to do is turn your controller on. on. Make sure you are on a level surface for this. Controller's on. You don't need GPS, you don't need nothing, you need a level surface. You can do this indoors, it doesn't matter. This is very important. After any type of bump, accident, or if it's just not flying right, an IMU calibration will fix a lot of things. Plug in the battery, let it do its self-initiate 
Elevation. Easy. Wait for the beeps. Okay, so just do a regular normal compass calibration. Set the quad down on a level surface. Now to do an IMU calibration, what you need to do is pin the left stick to the right and toggle the right stick, I'm trying to get so you can see the drone and the controller. Pin the left stick to the right and toggle the right stick back and forth, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And you will see the LEDs on the drone See them flashing yellow? Let go of that and it just reset the IMUs or the inertial measurement units. That is the most important thing you could do with a drone if it's not flying correctly is an IMU calibration. With the Hubson, that's how you do it. You turn it on, it doesn't matter if you're outside, I would recommend doing it inside where you know something's level because it's factory resetting the IMUs or the inertial measurement units. You pin the left stick to the right and you take the right one and you just go back and forth, left and right until you see the LEDs on the drone flash yellow, all four. Release the sticks and that will factory reset it your pitch and roll should now read zero. Yep, zero, zero. So IMU calibrations, controller calibrations, compass calibrations are very important with this drone. I think I covered most of it. Um, man, it's a lot of stuff to cover. I'm sorry this video was kind of long, but I hope this helps you guys if you needed it. And also, the charger that comes with this is really generic if you want your lipo batteries to last you can get any kind of aftermarket i mean professional charger you know like this is the radiant duplex it, this is called the squid it has tons of ends on here it has a jst connector it's got a traxxas an xt60 an ec3 it's even got two alligator clips and it has two bare wires where you can solder any type of connection you want on here and this will be able to set your capacity cut off when you're charging if you're just using the stock charger for the hubson h501s it's not telling you anything about the battery all it is doing is charging it and and that's it with these you can discharge you can charge you can set the you can put them in storage mode if you're not going to be using them. So it's a wise investment to get a professional charger, discharger, if you want your lipos to last. If you leave them fully charged and they just sit around and you're not flying, they will go bad. Because as the lipo battery sits and is fully charged, the, res the, I the electrolytes are lithium ion polymer. And the resistance builds up inside the battery. And when they get bad enough, they actually balloon. But I found with these particular Hubson batteries, they just won't hold the damn charge. It'll say it's charged. Then you go to fly, and it, it, it won't even fly for 10 seconds. It'll want to land. It'll go into a uh, low battery failsafe. So, I think that's as much as I can cover right now. I want to get outside and fly my Mavic Air. That's one of the coolest drones I have. 